All right, so let me show you how to make pizza. As we were saying earlier, four ingredients, water, yeast, flour, and salt. That's all you need to make a flatbread. And we're gonna season this pizza with a little bit of honey so it gets some caramelization on it and a little bit of olive oil. The water's about 110 degrees, just warm enough, just warm enough to activate the yeast. I sprinkle the yeast evenly over the top of the bowl to make sure that there's no lumps or clumps, and then I let it sit for about three or four minutes until it dissolves. So we take a look here, you can see that the yeast has totally dissolved. This is active dry yeast, and this is the, uh, this is the variety that comes in the little packets in the grocery stores. So, the next thing I'm going to do is put just a little bit of flour into the water. I want to create kind of a paste because the yeast needs the flour as its food source. So before I put in sugar or honey or anything like that, I want to make sure that it has a nourishing breakfast. Have a little bit of olive oil, I'm going to add that now and just a tad of honey, not too much. The honey will give it some good color. But if there's any more than, say, a tablespoon, the crust tends to burn on the bottom of the oven. So I blend these ingredients in, and then the last thing I want to add is the rest of the flour. and I put the salt in at the very end. I like the salt to go in last because the salt has a negative effect on the yeast. So I like to put the yeast in first and then put the salt in last. I use a cutting technique, not a folding technique because the moisture is on the inside of the dough and if you cut into it with a scraper, then that opens it up and it takes the water in much easier. Now at a certain point, it becomes difficult to really mix the dough together in the bowl. So this is a good time to just take everything and transfer it out onto the bench. This is the best part about me. You're going to get the dough on your hands, so let it get on there. Just make sure you wash your hands thoroughly first. And then with my scraper, you can see how I'm cutting down into the dough. I'm not really kneading the dough. I'm just making sure that all the flour has been absorbed by the moisture. If you were making this by machine, this would be the point where the dough would start to follow the hook and start to walk up the hook as the mixer was moving around. Once the dough has been gathered together, now we can start the kneading. Now here's a misconception. People think you need to really work this dough really hard and in fact, you don't really have to. You're just smearing it across the table and gathering it back. And you can see that my gesture is very parallel to the table. I'm not pushing down into the dough. It's really gentle. And as I'm doing it, I think you can see how the strands of the dough are starting to join together. See, the important thing is how the dough gathers under itself right here. That's where the kneading happens. It should look like a wave coming at you and rolling. So after three minutes, two or three minutes, you'll see that the dough really is holding together. Now, it's still quite kind of tacky, and that's good. And I hope you noticed that I did not add any additional flour to this at all. 
So for the next stage, I want to take all of this dough off of my hands. So the easiest way to do that is to take some flour and then move this over the trash can and then just rub my hands until all of the dough comes off. If you grow up in New Jersey, you already know this because this is how you get all the sand off your feet when you come out of the ocean. You just rub some dry sand all over your wet feet and then you're going to so now we're going to finish the dough off in a very gentle way. So it's important to make sure that there's no flour on the bench, no dough, anything like that. Now this is the one time where I'll take a little bit of flour and just put a little bit of that on the top of the dough. Really, that's all. I bet you can't even see it. Then, now I'm going to knead this dough very slowly. Just gather it up and roll the dough away. I'm going to give it a quarter turn, pull it towards me, press it down, and roll it away. Also, you can see how my hand kind of goes upwards. Right? A lot of people, when they need, they kind of press down. And you can see how I'm doing kind of like, it's like up dog. And I come in and then I roll up just until the seam is on the top. And I turn it. that I'm always burying the ugliness on the inside. And you can see what's happening. Every time I do this, you can see that this is becoming almost like bubble gum or something. This is where pressure, this is where we're looking. We're not looking at, oh, the dough is sticking or anything like that. No, we're looking right here. You can see how it's kind of like blistery and kind of white. That's what we're looking for. Like these little bubbles. That indicates that the dough is okay. If the dough does start to stick, just take the littlest bit of flour on your hands. That's all. And then the dough won't stick to you. Imagine you'll fade into this, and then after about two or three more minutes, you can see how smooth and springy and soft. And notice, no flour, no extra flour. So the dough is ready now. The dough is ready to ferment for an hour. So I'm going to take a bowl, Take a little bit of this olive oil, cook the inside of the bowl, and put some on the outside of the dough as well. Put a piece of plastic gently on top of the dough. And then we're going to set this aside for about an hour in a, in a warm place, about maybe 90 degrees, 85 degrees. So, because we're working on a video here, I made some dough earlier and allowed it to rise for an hour. So if you see how, how springy and light and soft and pillowy it is. So this is the point we're going to take the dough and we're going to divide it into our little pizza doughs. Take a tiny bit of flour and throw that across the bench. Put a little bit of flour on the top of the dough. If you, if you have a hard time mastering that, that Spider-Man method of throwing the flour, do, do like the little kids do. And they just put their hands together and they clap over and that does just fine. So I'm going to free the dough turn that out onto the table, and then put a little tiny bit more flour on top of that. For this particular dough, I'm going to cut into three pieces. And now I want to form these into a nice round dough. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of flour on my hands. Put a 
knock the flour out. I don't want to have any flour on the bench. And then I'm going to pull this piece to the middle. I'm going to pull this down. 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 And I turn it over. And then I have something that looks like a ball. So I'm going to knock the air out of the dough. Pull this, stretch it, bring that down. Pull this and stretch it, pull this and stretch it, stretch it, stretch it, stretch it, and turn that over, and then I have something that looks like a ball. So that's the first shape. Now I want to make them nice and tight and round. So I'm going to take, make sure there's no flour on my bench. I'm going to take a little bit of moisture just so I have some grip on the table. I don't want it wet, but I want to make sure that it isn't floury. And then I take my hands as if I'm, I'm bringing all the poker chips into my belly. And I gather the dough up and it turns. I do it again. I turn it. I do it again. I turn it. I do it again. I turn it. I do it again. I'm going to take a little bit of this here and then I'm going to come in under here. See how that's gathering up like that? I'm going to turn that and bring that down. Every time I do that, that makes that tighter and rounder. And that's what's going to make our pizza pie nice and round. All right, so. Now we want to take these pre-shaped pie balls. We want to take these dough pieces, gently oil them, put them on a piece of oiled parchment. And then I want to cover these and keep these protected. I'm going to put these in the refrigerator for 12 to 24 hours or 36 hours to give more flavor to them and to make them able to stretch a little bit better. And there's a saying, the best pizza dough was made yesterday. Now, the following rule that the best pizza dough was made yesterday, here's some dough that I made yesterday morning and I left it sit overnight. And you can see how it has nice round shapes to it. And I just used one of these convenient lids over top of it instead of using the plastic because I didn't want to damage the dough. But you can see how, how gentle and springy and soft all of these are and how they're getting nice and, and blistery. All right, so let's roll one of these out. Let's roll one of these out. Now we can have a little bit more flour this time around. So when we pick it up, we're going to pick it up very gently, put it in the flour, and then I'm going to come around on the outside, we're going to make a little rim all the way around. This one's happy. <laughs> Flip that over. Press that down. And then once I have this shape, now I'm going to work in the zone where I don't have so much flour. And I'm going to come around on these edges one more time. If I make a nice rim around the outside of the dough, again, that helps the pie stay nice and round. So now I'm going to work with a little bit of the dough at a time. And I'm going to stretch this out. I'll let you see what I'm doing underneath. This is underneath the dough. I'm just stretching that out. I'm letting gravity hold on to it. Pull that down and I'm opening it up. I 
going to take it on the back of my hands and I'm going to open my knuckles. Stretching the dough. Kind of looks like a, the underside of a, a mushroom cap or maybe an umbrella or something. Go around one more time and make it a little bit thinner around the outside. And you can see how thin this really is. This is this is what bakers call extensibility, the ability of the dough to stretch out without ripping and without becoming elastic. And what makes that, what gives that property to the dough is letting the dough sit overnight. So to bake this, I'm going to put a little bit of semolina on a tray. Put this on the top here. I'm going to take a little bit of olive oil, drizzle that over the bottom. some canned Marzano tomatoes here that I've chopped up finely and blended with the smallest amount of olive oil and the tiniest bit of salt just to bring out their flavor. When you put the sauce on the pizza, you want it to cover about 50% visually of the surface of the pie. If you have more than that, the dough is not going to cook very good. Now I have some fresh basil here that I'm going to sprinkle on so we can make a margarita pizza. And this is some mozzarella. This is a low fat mozzarella. I like to put the basil on underneath the cheese. That way I don't have to worry about it getting dry. Right. Make sure everything is free. And then before this goes into the oven, I'm going to make sure that it can travel on the tray. And if I need to put a little bit of extra semolina underneath, I don't want to get to the oven and have the pizza not ready to go. Bottom, so I'm going to bring that over here. So we have a nice crispy bottom there from the honey. And this is where I say buon appetito. Alright, well I had a great time showing you how to make pizza this evening and that recipe and many others are in my book, How to Bake Bread. You can get it on Amazon. And you can see by the dog's teeth marks down in the corner that this really is a tasty book. If you'd like to learn more about baking, look for me here at Cookstream for live interactive baking demonstrations where you can cook right along with me at home.